Hi everyone, so in this video I decided to design a bunch of different frog characters because I love frogs, a lot of people love frogs, frogs are really fun to draw, and I just wanted to do that. And I ended up coming up with five different frog characters all based on prompts I got from you guys, from my followers. So I went on Instagram and I posted something on my story just asking for different prompts I can use to turn into frog characters. And I got a lot of responses, so many, I think close to 100, maybe more, I didn't count. Um, but I had a lot to choose from. And the first one I decided to do was to turn a frog into a dragon, because I've been drawing some dragons lately. It's been something I'm kind of exploring. Um, I still kind of default to one specific kind of dragon, which is like the feathery kind, but I'd like to explore other options. Um, but the first one I did was a dragon frog, and for this one I started off by sketching out some thumbnails in my sketchbook. Um, I was just playing around with different frog styles and different ways I can uh, stylize the frog, what I want standing frogs or sitting frogs, and I ultimately decided on frogs that can kind of sit and stand so they can walk around but they can also um, kind of crouch like a frog can. So this dragon is a purple feathery frog dragon. Oh yeah, someone else, so there was one person that, that said to do dragons and someone else said something about wings and feathers, so I wanted to combine those into like a winged feathery dragon frog. And I put horns on the top of the head. I don't really think I made them work that well. I think they're kind of cheesy, but uh, I put them there anyway. And I'm using watercolor for this one. I kind of switch up the materials as I go because I was kind of playing around with what I wanted to use. So for the first frog, I used an orange, uh, erasable lead. I think it's the pilot color Eno lead. It's just orange lead. I actually used orange lead to sketch all of them, I'm pretty sure. Um, and some of them I sketched on the back, but this one I sketched in my sketchbook and then I drew it on paper. It's just a simple sitting pose, nothing too too crazy. It's just like a, like a static pose for the design. So it's a purple frog. I outlined it with a very soft pencil lead and I quickly discovered that it really isn't dark enough for me. Uh, I tend to use like pretty dark colors when I do watercolor and the pencil lines just, I ended up covering most of them. Um, so I'm not really sure how to integrate that into my workflow if I'm going to be doing that going forward. Uh, but it was definitely worth a try to use pencil for outlines. And what I ended up doing with this one is I actually did a lot of the outlines with just darker watercolor and I think that worked out pretty nicely. Um, this one felt the most natural. I kind of hit a little roadblock in the middle and then I made two that I was pretty happy with near the end. And I'm also using the Canson XL watercolor paper. It's actually pretty nice. I like it a lot, um, at least for little doodles. I bought a huge pack of it because it was so cheap and I was going to try to do print on it, but uh, it's just too rough of a surface to have smooth enough prints. I ended up settling on matte photo paper instead. Uh, which I should have just gotten in the first place, but I wanted to try printing on watercolor paper. Um, but I'm overall pretty happy with this this little frog. Uh, he's a cute little little dragon frog. He has his tongue hanging out of his mouth. He's purple and blue. I like the way I drew his wings. I think they look pretty energetic. And yeah, that's that a little frog. If you have a name for him, let me know in the comments. The second frog I did, someone suggested sunflowers, and I love sunflowers, and it's summer right now in my um, hemisphere climate, um, I decided to just draw a cute little frog holding some sunflowers. And I started off just using watercolor. I also outlined this one in... I think I also used the pencil? I can't remember now that I'm looking at it. Um, but I used watercolor for this. I used my Schmincke Horadam ones that I have. I really like them. I decided to give the frog a hat a little cape um, for like a little a little outfit for going around finding sunflowers. I'm not really that happy with how this one turned out. I think it was kind of forced and I don't know I just it's just not very creative. I didn't really put a lot of thought into it. I just wanted to draw a frog with sunflowers. Yeah it's just not my favorite thing in the world but I did uh, decide to break out the gouache with this one because I just really wasn't achieving what I wanted with the watercolor. It was kind of getting muddy and picking up a bit of the pencil um, well, not really. I think actually it was a, a dirty water problem that I had. So I used some gouache to kind of um, clean up the colors and this kind of led to me using a little bit more gouache in a later one and then I switched back to different media. Um, but I had a lot of fun using gouache uh, lately because I used to use it all the time and I've been on this watercolor kick for a while where I just didn't want to bother taking out my gouache. It's just so much messier and harder to mix. 
I mean, like, it's, it's physically harder to mix because it's thicker paint. Water mix is so much more easy than uh, thick, like, gloopy paint. But I, I like this one. I think it could be improved on a lot. Uh, I kind of want to, to be honest. I kind of want to really, I really want to push my design skills more and not default to things that I do. But this was, this is, these are just like fun little designs for the video. But if I was like seriously designing um, these frogs, I would have, I would spend prob probably an hour or more um, coming up with, with research photos and sketches and just really planning out their outfits and um, stylizing their body types because all their body types are very similar to each other. They're basically the same sort of structure just with different um, clothes and colors. Some of them are skinnier than others, but they're overall pretty much similar. So that's also something I, I want, I wish I uh, played around with more. And if I do another video like this, I'll definitely do that. But um, I managed to salvage this one in the end. It's a very uh, mixed media one. Um, and I think it turned out okay. So this next one I was really excited about and I kind of butchered it, but I still think it's an interesting concept that I might want to revisit. So a lot of people said wizard frog, magic frog, witch frog. Tons of people said that and I always do magical things. Um, so I was kind of hesitant to do it again because I do a lot of things like that. Well, not really, but I kind of feel like the whole like like magical nature-y thing, I do that a lot. Um, but I just, I wanted to do the wizard frog and I decided to just make it uh, wear like a very simple cape and I, I probably should have put more into the design and like I, I really wish I designed an elaborate outfit for one of these frogs. This one is a little bit on the plain side for sure um, but I guess I didn't put any clothes on it because I wanted the frog to be a very dark bluish black color and then have white highlights to be sort of the galaxy on the frog um, so he's kind of like like a sparkly magical frog himself so if you saw him outside he would probably glow a little bit and be slightly translucent and you'd see little um little like stars within him and he just has has a simple wand a star-shaped wand and i wanted to make him casting a spell but his spell is a rainbow of colors so i want him to be very simple um a duller color uh you know kind of muted blue very dark blue like navy blue black so that the colors around him would stand out and I think this is a good first draft but if I were to do it again um, I would definitely want to make him more in an energetic pose like he's really like putting all his effort into casting the spell and I would want it to wrap around his whole body and not just be like behind him but I think this is a good start and I, I just, I just, I would approach these so differently um, if I could do them a second time. But the point of these were to be quick and fun. And I'm just going to end up saying that for all of them. But the next two I'm actually okay with. I'm okay with how they turned out. Um, but this one, I thought I completely ruined it in the middle when I, I just went straight in with that dark color. I tried to be bold. And then it just kind of looked super flat. So I went with a uh, kind of like a peachy pencil crayon color. And just went around and added some highlights and that works really well to kind of brighten up dark watercolor that's too dark um, is using a pencil crayon and just lightly shading not pressing too hard so that it's shiny but um enough that it kind of covers the grain of the paper and you don't have this very like spotty grainy look oh i completely forgot i was going to use pastel on this one but i didn't do that and i did also did a really bad job of like staying within the the picture plane for these I like I really need to crop some of them and I was thinking of making these all into mini prints but I honestly they all look so different and I'm not fully happy with all of them but uh I don't know maybe I could I don't know but that is the magic frog not perfect but it's something And the next frog was so simple and minimal and fun that I just I just really like him. I just really like the colors I chose. Um, it was based off a prompt that was alchemy, and I just thought that was kind of cute and simple. And I really didn't make the frog actually wear anything that like an alchemist would wear. Um, I wasn't focusing on environments for this, but I decided to just make him holding a bunch of potions and like reaching over to put a potion away. And I just, I focused on the color palette with this one and simplicity with the line work. I used a ballpoint pen and honestly, I think ballpoint pen is probably one of my favorite things to outline with now. I just never, I've never really done it before because I don't like to, to rely on outlines too much when I do watercolor. I like to kind of 
um, add in the outlines in the end after I've established where I'm putting all the colors. Um, but for this one, I wanted to lean into that. I've been trying to explore my line art style more lately. Um, if you've been keeping a close eye on my art, maybe you've noticed. I don't know if that's even noticeable or something just in my head. Um, but I had a lot of fun with the simplicity of this one. It didn't take very long. I think it's effective. I like the cell shading I did, and I just love how the colors work together. I just, I don't know why this color palette is so pleasing to me for some reason. It's sort of like, like muted yellow, turquoise, uh, pink, and purple, and the frog actually has those spots on him. I think I should have done some like old wrinkly frog or, or a toad with like a bunch of warts all over it and like a very like marshy one. Um, but that can be for another video. Maybe I can do another frog video where I design more frogs and I try to improve them and make them more detailed and um, have more thought behind them, but that would just take so much longer. Like I wanted to do a lot um, and I didn't want to spend hours on each one. But I do, I am happy with how this one turned out as an illustration, but as a character design, it's definitely not, you know, it's not very intricate, but I do like it. And I kind of like how he's just like completely white and he sort of blends into the background, except for the little pops of color on him. And it's kind of like a clear focal point. You go from his face to the bottle, back to what he's holding, and you sort of get trapped in that sort of circle of focal points. So I think that is a, an effective part. So here's a little simple alchemist frog, a naked alchemist frog. <laughs> And the last one was so much fun because I never really draw stuff like this. I always forget that armor exists and that armor is a thing. Um, but I decided to do a Patreon prompt for the last one. So I asked my patrons um, to give me some prompts for frogs. And one of my most active uh, followers slash art buddy, um, Llama Freak, actually suggested to do a frog, um, kind of like a night frog wearing armor. And I really wanted to do that. Um, I think he also said to make it fighting a giant hawk, but I just wanted to keep it to the frog. But I think that is also a great idea. Um, but I had a lot of fun just drawing armor on a frog. I don't know if it would make sense with the way he's moving, but he kind of has sort of like a, like a tunic on underneath and then his armor on top. And uh, I had fun with the sort of patchy watercolor look that it has. Um, not completely filling in the area that is metal to make it kind of look more shiny. And I had fun uh, kind of changing up the, the style of the face, giving him sort of slits for pupils and a little uh, a smaller mouth than the other ones. That was a lot of fun. Um, and also his arms are a little bit, well, maybe they're not. I was going to say his arms are a bit more like thicker than the other frogs, but I don't know if that's necessarily true. Um, but I definitely had a lot of fun with this one. I started to kind of loosen up near the end and get more used to my materials and how I actually wanted to paint and wanted to use it. And the back, the, the shadow underneath it is totally just like thrown down in a few seconds. There's not really much thought in that, but I just wanted there to be something. I probably should have just kept it simple and just done two little shadows or just like a small circle, but I overdid it with the, with the, the ground shadow, but that's fine. It doesn't matter that much. And I like how his eyes are yellow. Um, the other frogs just have like dark pupils of nothingness. So I like how I actually give his eyes detail. And this is probably closer to the style that I kind of wanted them to have. But yeah, it was just fun to experiment with all the different media and try to create little simple frog characters from prompts. Um, I definitely think it'd be cool to do another video like this with more prompts and try to dive a little bit deeper in into the designs and poses and expressions and all that kind of stuff. So let me know if you're interested and if you think there's any other animals I should do, um, like a little mini series of characters that are all kind of similarly styled to each other. Um, let me know what you think and what other prompts I could do and just anything that you want to see from me in general. I really hope you enjoyed seeing all these speed paints, all these character designs. It was a lot of fun for me and I hope that, uh, that you all got a chance to kind of suggest stuff on Instagram. Um, I obviously can't do everybody, but it was really nice to have all those suggestions. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.